Well, folks, we finally did it. After waiting all year, watching weekly, wondering what's going to happen here. Ooh, what if this happens at the show? We made it. We are finally at WrestleMania. I know I am uber excited. I know you're excited to be here. And if you're a new fan, get excited. If you don't know, WrestleMania is like the Super Bowl of professional wrestling. It's the biggest stage. All the stars come out. You know, we have guest appearances up the wazoo uh, coming for this. And it's just a great time. And the best of the best of the best of the best get put on display. And since there's like up oh, like 12 or 13 matches this year, I'm going to break down my preview for this year into uh you know night one night two because it also helps that triple h on his socials already announced which matches are going to take place on which night so without further ado let's get into the wrestlemania night one preview all right kicking off with dirty dom mysterio and santos escobar taking on Rey mysterio and dragon lee take you back to wrestlemania 39 it was a father-son affair as Rey mysterio and Don Mysterio battle with Ray winning and honestly at the time probably one of the better built matches heading into Mania. Definitely one of the most anticipated I would think but again Ray Mysterio won that because Dom you know accused Ray of being a deadbeat dad and never being there always be on the road growing up and all that kind of stuff. Fast forward to you know this year well late last year early this year and Rey Mysterio, Rey Mysterio has pissed off somebody else under him. This time being Santos Escobar, who was a, uh, Santos was a part of the Rey's, the Rey led faction, Latin World Order, LWL. And Santos is like, nah, F this. And did his own thing, brought back his own faction, Legado del Fantasma. And so, you know, Santos and Don were just, you know, messing with Rey, beating his ass until he said no Ray's like enough me uh you two versus me and somebody else and then Ray brings in the high flying sensational and now newest member of LW LWO Dragon Lee so this match is going to be Lucha Libre and I'm excited that you know uh the Lucha style gets front and center with all four you know these his Hispanic wrestlers uh going at it it's gonna be fun even if it's the, I, me personally, even if I think it doesn't get the most minutes, they're gonna make the most of those minutes. And so with that, um, you know, if Ray and Dra uh, Dragon Lee win, so oh, fun, great, yeah, woo, get him cheered moment at uh, WrestleMania. But I think Santos and Dom need to win more, especially for Dom to get pinned twice in two years by his father would not be a good look, even if he's a slimy heel that can get beat up and still be over. I do think for Santos to get over here, I think that they, Santos and Dom wins, but something to look out for. When Ray announced Dragon Lee as his partner, so a certain member of the LWO was not too happy about that. So be on the lookout for some shenanigans involved in that. But yeah, give me Dom Mysterio and Santos Escobar to win the tag match. Next, we have Damage Control, which consists of Asuka, Kairi Sane, and Dakota Kai versus the team of Bianca Belair, Naomi, and Jade Cardio. Now, if you go back to SummerSlam, I believe, I believe it was 2022, Damage Control made their debut. At the time, it was uh, Bailey, Dakota Kai, and Io Sky. And they immediately came back and just started messing with Bianca Belair, going after her title. Bay was unsuccessful, but the beatdowns were there. And then last year at uh, SummerSlam, EO Sky cashed in uh, her money to bank contract, beating Bianca after Bianca just won the women's title off of Asuka. And then later, later on, like a month or so after that, or two months after that, uh, Damage Control put. Uh, what's, what's her name? Bianca on the shelf. And then you fast forward, Asuka joins Damage Control, returning Kyrie Sane 
joins damage control and Bianca comes back looking for revenge and it would have been a one on four ish escapade. But then you have returning Naomi. If you don't know Naomi, Naomi was a part of the company forever left uh, until about two ish years ago, give or take and is now back in the fold. And so Naomi joins uh, Bianca's side to take their damage control. It's still, you know, three or four on two. But then you have one of the biggest signings for WWE recent memory. Definitely the second biggest signing from AEW to WWE right behind Cody Rhodes and Jade Cargill. Jade Cargill had an impressive run at AEW. Was basically undefeated for her almost her entire run. Signed, huge pop shebang. She does her, I guess, a f official debut in the Royal Rumble this year and eliminates the biggest women's competitor in the ring by herself. Has an impressive showing, made it to the final four or five, I think. And now we get her official, like, regular match debut. And it's going to be awesome. And there's bad blood there. In this match, I built off two gears, and you know, normally like this, I would say Damage Control picks up the win just to keep the momentum. You do have the women's tag team champions in this match, and Oscar and Carrie Sane, but it's the debut of Jade Cargill. They're not gonna ever eat a loss or a debut. So look for Team Bianca to pick up the win. Look for Jade to shine. And look for, like I said, Bianca Belair gets her revenge for the last two years of her career. Team Bianca are the winners. Next, we have the Intercontinental title match between Guther and Sami Zayn. Now, if you don't know, if you're new to this, Guther won the Intercontinental title on June 10th of 2022. It has not looked back since. He's defeated future Hall of Famers, up and comers, anyone, and often in dominant fas fashion using a litany of moves uh, Guther owns the record for the most consecutive days as Aaron Connell champion and also the most cumulative days as Aaron Connell champion so and now he faces a challenge in Sami Zayn is beloved is like beloved by fans is uh you no know, a hero to many and it's going to be a great match because we know Guther can go, Sami Zayn can go. This is a whole Sami doubting himself. Can he actually do it? Can he win? Can he actually defeat Guther? And he's going for the sympathetic route, doubting himself, needing uh, outside assistance, outside voice like Chad Gable to help him. Even though in my opinion, this should be a Guther Chad Gable match. Sami got, uh, got this opportunity by winning a gauntlet match, last pinning Chad Gable. To me, that should have been reversed. Gable has a better story for this. Gable has a more history with Gunther. And Gable could benefit the most from a win here ending the reign, but not gonna get mad about that. Again, that's neither here or there. Yeah, like I said, gonna be a good match. Both can go. If Sammy won, it'll be a cool moment, but I just don't think Sammy wins here. Um, Sammy doesn't need to be the one to, you know, benefit off ending the reign. I think that should be stayed for Gable. Um, and they can do it later. You have uh, Guthers from Austria. He's from, was that, Eastern Europe. Uh, and the WWE is going Europe a lot this summer with Clash of the Castle, uh, Backlash, and Bash in Berlin. I think is that I think it's like late August. They might. They probably want Guther as a champion there. Like I said, someone like a Chad Gable could benefit. Or down to NXT when Ilya Dragunov comes up, he benefits more from that. Him and Guther have history, so because of that, I think Guther retains here in a good match because of who's involved, because of who is playing a part in a story. Just be on the lookout for some shenanigans in this one. But yeah, Guther retains the IC title. Next, we have the six-team tag ladder match for the undisputed. WWE tag titles and the teams are the champs Judgment Day, Finn Balor, Damian Priest, DIY, Tommaso Ciampa, Johnny Gargano, Awesome Truth, which is the Miz and our Truth, A Town Down Under, which is Grayson Waller and Austin Theory, New Catch Republic, which is 
Tyler Bate, Pete Dunn, and a new day, which is Xavier Woods, Kofi Kingston. And in this match, the tag champs are screwed. Judgment Day face uh, the worst odds of anyone this weekend to retain their titles. And you know, they, they're not competing against just one one on you know, one team, they're not competing against two teams, not even three, but five other teams. In order to win a ladder match, you gotta somehow beat everyone down, go grab a ladder from outside the ring, pull it back in the ring, set it up, and climb up and grab the titles. So Judgment Day have been you know your champs around the title since like since basically for the last half of 2023. And you know, while they're fun as champs, they haven't really exactly did too many decent to me decent feuds and, and decent uh uh title defenses their biggest one being at elimination chamber in perf against new catch republic and that match had 0 0.1 seconds of build time it was basically just felt like it was starting to get our last minute while i don't think there's an overwhelming contender in this that oh my goodness it's time for be champs yeah they need to be champs. Something that Michael Cole, the uh, Raw announcer said on the last episode of Raw, made me think we're gonna get something different here. He said that the, uh, both sets of uh, titles, so the Raw and SmackDown tag titles will be hanging, and the match doesn't end until both sets come down, which means that if somebody were to go up and grab the Raw tag titles, they would be you know, the Raw tag team champions and the SmackDown titles will still be hanging there and the match will still go. Based on that, I do think we finally see them split the belts, which is a needed thing because Raw needs their own set of tag titles. SmackDown needs their own set of tag titles. So with that, there are going to be two winners. I expect for Raw, give me DIY. I know Awesome Truth is a fan, fra fan favorite. makes the most sense. But I think D DIY gets the moment here. And for SmackDown, A-Town Down Under, the thought of Austin uh, Theory and Grayson Waller being assholes running around with the tag titles is, is a fun idea, which uh, would go well over the summer. And so, yeah, give me DIY at A-Town Down Under to split the tag titles and win. All right, we move now to the women's world title between Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch. And this is a... A match that was held off for a year that we're finally getting at WrestleMania. Um, because last year at WrestleMania 39, Rhea Ripley won the, at the time, the SmackDown Women's Championship and uh, an all timer against Charlotte Flair. You know, if you want to see a great women's match, do yourself a favor and watch that. And since that win, she's converted the title from SmackDown Women's Championship to the World's Wim Women's World Championship and absolutely beat everyone in her way. Becky Lynch, on the other hand, was friend partner thingy of Trish Stratus and Lita at last year's WrestleMania. And that turned into an enemy thing with Trish Stratus. Then Becky went down to XT, won that title, lost that title. And now she's back in the Raw women's title scene. And this one started out kind of similar to the Sami Zayn Guther one where Becky was like doubting herself. Oh, can I actually beat Rhea? Can I actually do it? And then Becky, after a elimination chamber win to secure the title shot and a win against Nia Jackson, like a decent mini feud, including a last woman standing, she now finds herself face to face with Rhea. You know, pride versus pride. I can beat you. No, I can beat you. This kick. This started off at like a WrestleMania kickoff press conference with the stare down that was teased and now it's official these two can go they're the two biggest women stars on raw and the fact that they held held them off away from each other and made it make sense for a year is impressive itself with all that being said becky winning here makes sense Rhea has been champ for over a year and while she's been great she's a star the actual reign itself has been not lackluster, but the lack of defenses over the year has hurt it. Becky would be, Becky winning would have a multitude of new challengers, make it refreshing and all that. But Rhea to were to retain, it would solidify herself uh, even more in the echelon of history. And I do think based on my prediction earlier of Ben and Damien or the Judgment Day, 
losing their tag titles and Rhea were to win or keep hers, it would we will start to see more of the cracks in Judgment Day leading to a breakup. And I think that's where to go. So give me Rhea Ripley to retain her title. Next we have Jimmy Uso versus Jay Uso. And for only the third time in WrestleMania, we have a real life brother versus brother match. No, The Undertaker and Kane do not count, but they're joining the likes of Brett versus Owen Hart, Matt versus Jeff Hardy. This match has been building since SummerSlam when Jimmy and Jay left the Bloodline, which is a faction ruled by their cousin Roman Reigns, includes their younger brother Solo Sokoa, Paul Heyman. They left it, they were sick of Roman, and it led to a WWE Championship Tribal Combat match. I think I'm saying that right. Against Jay Uso and Roman Reigns. And Jimmy comes back and calls Jay the title. And then Jimmy comes later on in the year and calls Jay the tag titles. And then Jimmy comes on earlier this year and calls Jay the IC uh, title against Gunther. And so Jimmy has been thrown to Jay's side for a while. Even when Jay switched brands and went to Raw, Jimmy was still like messed with him. And so Jay had enough, called him out to a match, and Jimmy agreed. And in the build to this, you know, Jimmy's been like, hey, Jay, I'm still your uh, bigger brother. So I think he was born by like 12, like 10 minutes early or something like that. And you know, Jimmy's like, oh, your success, Jay, is due to me. And Jay stays like, I miss you, brother, but you know, it's, I got whooped that ass. This match, as far as like, actual wrestling has a chance to steal the night one show Imagine the chemistry these two have you know they're twins they're brothers they've been tag teaming all, all the time they can sit there and have a have like a all-time classic like in their sleep without even saying a word it's gonna be great i say the chemistry is off the charts this match was te uh teased at the world Rumble this year with Jay and Jimmy uh, coming in at one and two respectively. And as far as a winner, Jimmy would need this win more because he's been nothing but like a lackey to Roman Reigns ever since rejoining the bloodline. And this would go a long way to establish him as like a solo uh, competitor as a, an act himself. Jay winning here makes sense because his brother has been doing nothing but screwing him over for the last half year. So I'm gonna lean that way. Give me Jay Uso to get a bit of revenge against his brother and win in this brother versus brother showdown. All right, that takes us to the night one main event. We have Cody Rhodes and the world heavyweight champion Seth Rollins versus the WWE champion Roman Reigns and The Rock. And this match does have some implications. It does have some stakes when it comes to night two of WrestleMania. Cody and Seth win, then the rest of the bloodline is Bard can't be nowhere near the night two main event, which is Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes for the WWE title. But if Rock and Roman win, then the night two main event will be contested under blood bloodline rules, which basically means they can do whatever the hell they want. And I'll just say it, this match has been probably been the best build of any WrestleMania match in quite some time. First off, you have the Rock, like one of the biggest Hollywood stars, whether you like his movies or not, he's one of the biggest Hollywood stars. He's back. He's basically been back full time. He it's been almost every single week we got something rock related, him coming out, him doing a concert, him whooping ass, something. But this, you know, this all of this started when uh Cody won the Royal Rumble. A, a Royal Rumble win means you get to face the champ of your choosing at that that year's WrestleMania. So we were all set for Roman Cody 2 with Roman Cody 1 taking place last year at WrestleMania. All set for that. And then Cody's like, oh, you know, I'm not going to challenge you, Roman, this year at WrestleMania. Uh, I took some counsel on that. And then out comes The Rock. And it was teased that we were getting Rock and Roman at WrestleMania. Backlash Online pivot, pivoted that and turned Rock into an asshole. Like in the fans eyes and he, the rock to his credit ran with that he went on like talk shows talking all the cody fans are like cody crybabies all that kind of stuff and they even had at the aforementioned wrestlemania kickoff press conference during super bowl week which we had that becky Rhea tease 
The Rock came out basically trying to solidify his match against Roman Reigns saying, you know, this is family against family. This is for this is the great biggest WrestleMania main event you can have and all that kind of stuff. And him and uh, Roman were kind of like talking down Seth Rollins, who was there, and uh, Cody Rhodes, which brought out Cody Rhodes saying, you know, this is uh, some bullshit. And oh, now I choose you, Roman, to uh, face at WrestleMania. Let you some squabbling. And, let, and then The Rock just slapping the taste out of uh, Cody Rhodes' mouth. Fast forward, we had Cody slapping The Rock back. We had verbal jousting. And we had The Rock recently just beat, and this is no exaggeration, beat Cody Rhodes bloody. And it was like some of a movie, Cody Rhodes bleeding on the ground. The Rock taking like a weight belt with Cody, Cody Rhodes' mom's name on it and smearing Cody's blood in it. And The Rock just being the absolute bad guy, the best bad guy he could be. Um, yeah, this has been it's been great. It's been uh, uh, as a fan, it's been great to watch. If you're if you're unaware of what's going on, just fuck, go and stay on here, stay on YouTube, find a vi uh, promo video hyping up this match, and get caught up. It's been great. And then you also have. Really, the two at, for this this match, it's kind of the two afterthoughts, in the WWE Champion Roman Reigns, who is the head of the table, the Tribal Chief, has been champ since uh, August September of 2020, and you have Seth Rollins, who has been a good World Heavyweight Champion, uh, fighting World Heavyweight Champion, and you just have the makings of an all timer. Now, if like I said, if Cody and Seth win, it's you know bloodline is out uh, out of the way for night two as a real shot at you know dethroning armor rings and for like seth was saying like taking down the bloodline once and for all but i have a hard time seeing a win um the bloodline rules has been built up the rock being involved has been built up you're not gonna sit there and do all this rock stuff for him to only appear in night one not night two and with bloodline like anything goes night two main event this is going to be a beautiful disaster a elegant tornado and i can't wait i'll get to that in the night two prediction but with all that bloodline rules makes night two all the more interesting so at the end of the show the night one main event roman reigns and the rock are going to be your, your winners and are going to stand tall over cody and seth all right and a quick recap of my winners I have Don Mysterio Santos Escobar. I have Team Bianca winning. I have DIY and A Town Down Under winning. I have Jay Uso winning. I have Gunther retaining. I have Rhea retaining. And I have Roman Reigns and The Rock winning. But, like I say, we won't know until we know. So that's why you gotta watch. Again, I'm excited for WrestleMania. I'm ready to tune in uh, Saturday, April 6th. 7 Eastern on Peacock. Uh, you're welcome for a plug, let me see. But yeah, uh, let me know in the comments below who do you think's winning? How far off am I? Yell at me. I don't really care. But uh, go ahead, like, and subscribe. It helps me out. I will catch you guys in the night two uh, prediction video. Or if you're watching this late, way later, I'll catch you in the next video. I am It's Heartfelt on all socials. And right now, I am just heartfelt. Peace.